Welcome back chemists. In this video, we will be talking about some interesting shapes that result from our expanded octets. After today, you should be able to identify the molecular geometries and bond angles for molecules with expanded octets. There are five basic geometries that have no lone pairs on them. There's linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramidal, and octahedral. You may notice that each of these have an AX notation. A represents the central atom, and X represents the terminal atoms. So these are five basic geometries that do not have any lone pairs around the central atom, or A. You'll also notice that there are bond angles specific to each of these geometries. So if it's linear, the angle of the bonds is going to be 180 degrees. And then for trigonal planar, it's going to be 120 between those three atoms. For tetrahedral, it's 109.5. Trigonal bipyramidal is a little tricky. There's actually two. So there's um, an, an angle measure of 120 around the what we say equatorial position. And when I say equatorial, you wanna think equator, like around the belt. So really we're talking around the middle of the molecule there. That's gonna be 120. And then from the axial position, the one standing straight up or the one pointing straight down, that is going to be a 90 degree. And our octahedral is 90 degrees all the way around for everything. So when we start substituting on these five basic geometries, different amounts of unshared pairs of electrons or lone pairs of electrons, we get some new and interesting shapes. And so that's the focus of this video. So remember in Vesper theory, we treat multiple bonds, whether it's like a double or a triple or a single, the same as single bonds. So you may also expect lone pairs to be similar to bonded pairs. However, they're not. And that's what creates those interesting geometries. Lone pairs do in fact occupy a larger volume than bonding pairs. And this is just because there's not a nucleus on the other side attracting those electrons and kind of holding them in place. So the strength of the repulsion that we'll see is that if you have lone pair, lone pair next to each other, that repulsion is going to be much greater than lone pair, bonded pair, than bonded pair, bonded pair. So the order of repulsion is going to be lone pair, lone pair first, then lone pair, bonded pair, and then bonded pair, bonded pair. So here are some examples. We'll be first looking at the bent shape. Okay, so in the bent shape, you have two options for bent. You can have one where you've got two bonded atoms and one unshared pair, or two bonded atoms and two unshared pairs. And notice that those lines indicate where electrons, those unshared pairs of electrons are located. So here's an example of the first one. So this is AX2E. And in this case, we see that we have the um, bonded regions as two and the unshared pair as one. So this is gonna be a, a bond angle of 120 degrees. If we took something like water, water has four what we call electron domains or electron regions, and this is AX2E2. And so in this case, you wouldn't expect the bond angle to be 109.5 because of the fact that there is extra repulsion between those two unshared pairs. So we usually say that the bond angle is less than 109.5. In fact, for water, if you were to look it up, it's probably closer to around 104. For trigonal pyramid, notice this is going to be the AX3E shape. In this case, we have an unshared pair on that central atom, and I've got ammonia as your example. So in this case, even though we have four electron regions or four electron domains, right? We've got an unshared pair and three bonded atoms. We're going to expect to see that the bond angle measure is going to be around less than 109.5. I think in this case, it's closer to 107. Are you expected to necessarily memorize that? Absolutely not. But it's just important for you to recognize that if you have unshared pairs of electrons next to each other, they're gonna experience more repulsion than for example, two bonded pairs. Recall that elements in the third period and higher can form compounds in which your octet is exceeded. 
And so now we can get into those interesting shapes where we have now have five electron domains or six electron domains, and we've substituted some unshared pairs on those central atoms. So first up, when we're looking at five electron domains, is the seesaw. This is a really cool shape. This is probably one of my favorites. And so this is an example of seesaw when we have SF4. So in this case, we've got our central atom A, our four terminal atoms as X, and then our unshared pair is going to be E. So in this case, this is a trigonal bipyramidal kind of shape. It's not the molecular geometry, I guess actually it's technically called the electron pair geometry. But what we're gonna see here is that the bond angle is going to be very similar. So this is gonna be around 120 and around 90. T shape is up next. So now we take, again, one of those atoms and we substitute in an unshared pair. And so in this case, this is ClF3, so we have AX3E2, and this is going to be, again, the bond angle to be around 120 and 90. And then finally, this one's really cool, where we take the linear shape. Notice we've got those three bonded atoms all in a row, and now around the belt, or the equatorial position, we have unshared pairs of electrons. So neat. And in this case, this is going to be a linear shape because those atoms are arranged in a line. And so we would expect that the bond angle in this case for those atoms arranged in a line to be 180 degrees. Next up is whenever we have six electron domains. So if we substitute one of those six electron domains, um, from, we now get this shape called square pyramid. And so in the square pyramid shape, we have five things bonded to it, five bonded atoms and one unshared pair. And so that makes the shape AX5E, and that corresponds to a bond angle of around 90. If we take one of the other electron pairs and um, arrange it so that we now have those two in those in the opposite positions, this is now called a square planar. And so something like this would be A, uh, excuse me, would be XEF4, where we have four terminal atoms, and two unshared pairs of electrons. And it's called square planar because it literally is square and it's flat. So here is a summary. Are you, uh, am I expecting you to know every single one of these shapes by now? Absolutely not. This takes practice and some memorization. So you're going to have to definitely memorize some of these shapes, but hopefully your teacher is going to help you do that by providing some model activities where you can actually use models to build some of these things. If you don't have models, toothpicks and gumdrops or toothpicks and marshmallows work well, um, and that can really help you see the shapes of these molecules and the bond angles that they make. Great job, chemists. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, make sure you memorize those shapes.